be the time that the golden generation can really shine. Today they played some fantastic, yeah. as you'd expect them to do with the, the players they've got. Dries Mertens down one side, Hazard, every time he got on the ball he was running past people, Lukaku with his power and pace, but it's still held together by Kevin De Bruyne. He was magnificent, some of his little one-twos, he's passing round the corner, he's passing over the top. He's the player that really makes them tick. You take a look at the starting eleven that they put out, Shaq, and it is one of those cases in which it's obvious that they should be in contention when it comes to the business end of this World Cup. But there is still a little bit of doubt around them. Why? There's still a lot of doubt around them, certainly in my mind. And it's all down to Lukaku up front. As impressive as he's been for club, I don't think he's been able to replicate that form for country. It's a different... Good today, though, didn't he? Two goals? He, he did, but it's a different game. I, against a poor Costa Rica team, maybe you have to say, given what we've seen from them over the last couple of weeks. But at the World Cup, it's a different game. It's slower. You have to be cleaner with your finishing. And I'm not, I'm not sure that Lukaku is that guy. We are talking about the same Romelu Lukaku who lost his starting spot to Origi four years ago. That, he's improved, I just don't think enough to suggest that Belgium are going to go on and, and win this or get to a final. I wouldn't say that's their weakness. Their weakness could be the wing-backs. Carrasco, who's really a left-winger playing at left wing-back, he looks like he's going to start. Mounier down the other side, he's a decent player, but he's not a top-class player. And Alderweireld, you know, I think is a wonderful player, but over the last year he hasn't played that much football. He hasn't been in Tottenham's side. I think he's lost that little bit of confidence. And Boyata as the middle centre-half in a back three. They would be the weaknesses for me. Uh, let's uh, bring Gab into the conversation, shall we? Gab, is this kind of last-chance saloon for this generation? Um, I think as far as the World Cup is concerned, perhaps. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to be around for the Euros. Um, I, I think it's perhaps last-chance saloon for, for playing a certain type of, of, of Belgian football that we saw under Vilmots and hopefully it's going to be version 2.0 the improved version under under Roberto Martinez but you know I was listening to, to what you guys were saying about Lukaku and um, I think the challenge is going to be and we'll find out while he's done it Lukaku gets a very different type of service at Manchester United than he does uh, with Belgium so I, I think that could be something problematic but remember they always have the plan B Dries Mertens played at center forward all season long for Napoli um, might that be something that Roberto turns through, turns to if, if Lukaku isn't firing? What success, Robbo, for Belgium this tournament? How far do they go when you think, yeah, they fulfilled their potential? I think they have to get to the semi-finals with the really? squad that we, you've just seen, with the amount of players that they've got that I would think are verging on world-class players. And we're talking about Hazard, we're talking about De Bruyne. Uh, and I, I still don't think Lukaku's a problem for them. They've got Batshuayi to come on if need be. I think they have to get to the semi-finals to, have a, to be successful. And I think it's a big job for Roberto Martinez. He's got some big players to cope with. Is he up and the, for that job? I think he's a good coach. Does he understand the defensive side of the game? And that's why I highlighted the problem in the wing-back area. Everton, they played good football at Everton. They scored goals at Everton. But defensively, they weren't good enough. At Wigan, his team wasn't good enough defensively. Yes, they played great counter-attacking football. They played some good passing football. But he's always had a problem with the defensive side of the game. And that could be their problem in this tournament. What would define a successful campaign, Shane? I agree, with, I agree with, with, with Stu here. It's got to be a semi-final. I think a lot comes down to who finishes one and two in, in their group, of course, yep. group with England. You then pay up against Colombia or Senegal out of Group G, and that determines exactly who, who you come up against in, in, in the quarters and then the semis. Um, but yes, given the talent in this squad, if you don't make these semi-finals, it, it's seen as a poor tournament for them. Uh, let's just remind you of Belgium's group. Of course, they're drawn with England, who are the other favourites to uh, advance, along with... Tunisia and Panama. Uh, Gad, the bookies have got Belgium as the strong favourites to get out of this group first. Uh, is that fair? Are they a much better side overall than England? Um, I think they're a more talented side, no question about it. Uh, I'm not surprised the bookies feel that way. A lot of it also you know, has to do with sort of the development uh, of the group, the order in which you play. The thinking is Belgium have, have a much softer start against Panama. Uh, and, uh, and then they can build momentum from there. And, and possibly also the fact that, you know, in the third game, if Belgium need to win against England to finish ahead of them, that they can do that. Uh, you know, <laughs> right now there's no doubting Belgium's talent, uh, whereas England are probably behind, uh, certainly in, in, in terms of, of, of the arc of progress that, that they're trying to get to. We discussed yesterday how Griezmann said that he's going to get everything done before the start of the World Cup. It seems that Alisson seems to be saying the same sort of sentiments regarding his future, of course, being heavily linked to Liverpool. 
Yeah, and but at the same time, I think there's also uh, there's also contract negotiation going on. Um, from what I've been told, this is unlikely to get done before the World Cup, if at all. There's still a lot of distance, obviously, uh, between these two sides. Obviously, the relationship between the two ownership groups, uh, Roma and Liverpool, very, very close, both Boston-based. Uh, but that said, um, you know, you could argue they already helped them out last year with Mohamed Salah. Uh, they don't want to let another world, world beater get away uh, this soon. And I think from Roma's perspective, it makes sense to see what happens after the World Cup and what kind of tournament uh, Allison has. This is it, Shaq, isn't it? Because it's a lot of money. We're in things like $80 million, mm -hmm. almost excess of that. Is he worth it? I think he's worth it to Liverpool, without question. I, I think if, you, if Liverpool are to continue to contend at the higher ends of, of European football, if they are to threaten the likes of Manchester City and Manchester United, one of the holes that they've got to plug is, is in between the sticks. Alisson goes a long way to that. You spend $75 million on a, on a centre-back, I still think as a defensive unit, it's incomplete. You, you need a goalkeeper who can hold up their end as well. This is the problem, though, isn't it, Robbo? Because you're putting all your eggs pretty much in a goalkeeping basket. Because if you put $80 million there, you haven't got much of a budget left to reinforce that defence or give you some backup front as well. They were better defensively towards the end of the season. Van Dijk certainly made a difference. I wouldn't say he read the game as well as people would say it is. But Liverpool were better all round defensively. In midfield, it wasn't just about the back four. It was about how they defended elsewhere on the field. But they still need that goalkeeper. And I don't think it matters how much they spend on the goalkeeper. They need a new goalkeeper. Because Karras won't come back from that disaster against the Real Madrid. There's been a lot of talk, hasn't there, about what the fan experience is going to be like in the World Cup this year. Well, Alison Bender and Mark Ogden will be in Russia throughout the tournament. They landed in Moscow today and gave us their first impression. Yes, hello. Welcome to Moscow. Here we are right outside Red Square, but it is actually closed at the moment. It's a public holiday tomorrow and there's a big classical music gala going on there as well. But even though the tournament doesn't kick off until Thursday, the atmosphere is incredible. There's fans already. I haven't seen any England fans yet, but I guess England don't play for a while. No, I mean, I, I travelled out today and it was, it was interesting that my flight was full of Peruvians, Mexicans, Colombians, Uruguayans, not many England fans, but the problem with that is they don't play till Monday, so Volgograd's quite a long way away as well. So, you know, there's a reason why there's not many England fans here. Also, the concerns of what happened in Marseille two years ago. So you were there. I mean, should England fans be worried? Obviously, there were violent clashes between the two sets of fans, the ultras, it probably has to be said. And there's heavy policing here, we can see. I mean, I, I was in Marseille and it was, it was quite a scary exercise, to be honest, to be there. But, you know... I was at the Confederations Cup last year and it, the security was intense. Cue the police sirens, by the way. Yeah, it was a much more different atmosphere. And I think that the England fans aren't travelling great numbers, about 32,000, which is way down on the number. Australia, the USA have got more fans here. USA are second to 8, Russia. 8,000 tickets sold to the States. So I think the England fans are genuinely concerned. And I think also there's an element of, you know, fatigue with the, the football as well. I think they're not that optimistic about the way it's going to go so with that and the fans it's, it's a scary concept for England fans. Okay and it certainly was an easy journey wasn't it just three hours 40 from London Heathrow so the England fans coming into Moscow should find the trip a lot easier that's been put out um, in the press. We will be here every day until the tournament ends on the 15th so make sure you keep it right with us here at ESPN. Just a few weeks ago Patrick Vieira of course was linked heavily to a move to the Gunners yet it seems now he's going to Nice it's been official as they Gabby's moving from NYCFC to League R, and it's interesting to see how his progression now will go because expectations have changed certainly at Nice, and they where well, they're much higher these days. Uh, they're higher to a point. Obviously, the ownership group is there, but uh, you know they're still, I don't think, in a position to necessarily make that that big leap up. Obviously, they had that tremendous season uh, a couple years ago. Um, the interesting thing with Vieira is he was, or my understanding is, he was certainly led to believe, go to NYCFC, do your thing, uh, Pep's going to come, he's going to he sign a three-year contract, we don't know, you know, he's, he's going to last three years, and then he'll be gone, and then your time, you know, will be here in, uh, at City. Now, obviously, with Pep deciding he's going to stick around longer, I think Vieira felt, all right, I've been here, I've done my time, I need a new experience. Obviously, the City job won't be available how can i best prepare myself for it and so he opts to go back to france back to nice and uh and, and try to bring his football there and 
and then really face a totally different set of challenges, get a different skill set than what you have uh, in MLS, where obviously there's there's salary caps and there's rules and there's there's restrictions. Here, he can perhaps build his team in a slightly more traditional traditional from a European standpoint way. Be hard pushed to find anyone in MLS who's played with him, who have anything but good things to say about Vieira. But it's a big step now. It is, but it's a step that he prepared himself for, not by just what he did with NYCFC, but in time he spent in the off-season, he spoke about spending time with Pep Guardiola, about going to a meeting with Sarri at, at Napoli, stuff like that, to, to kind of get a better understanding of football at the highest level. Now, if, if this was a player making that same move, it's a no-brainer. For, for, for Patrick Vieira, similarly, as a coach, I think it, it ticks all the right boxes. It makes a whole lot of sense. If a big European club like a Manchester City comes a calling uh, after Pep Guardiola decides he, he, his time is up, I, I, I'm sure that, that won't be much of a, a decision for him to make either. Future Premier League manager? I think he will be. I've been impressed with some of the things he's done when he was Manchester City's youth coach. I saw the way they played. He's also done very well for New York City FC. Up to a certain point, I think he's a, he's a good coach at, before the game. I haven't seen him make the right changes when things are going against him. When they played the Red Bulls of New York City FC, they were 2-3-0 down after 20 minutes, and it was, it was like watching Arsene Wenger's team. Oh, the Red Bulls wanted to, wanted to go and press the ball. New York City wanted to play out from the back, and suddenly they were 3-0 down, and he didn't recognise what was happening. How did you, changed the how did you turn that into a dig at Arsene? You knew I would get that in at some point. 22 minutes. 22 minutes. You knew I'd get it in. He did because he could change the game. Poor Wenger. Right, we ask you, let's end the show, show with your ultimate 11, Robert. When it comes to the World Cup, uh, the boys have been, of course, doing it throughout the week. Let's take a look at who you've chosen. Uh, De Gea in goal, Marcelo Ramos, Godina, Kimmich, uh, De Bruyne, Kante, Modric, Neymar, Ronaldo and Messi. Uh, there is a problem. It's a big problem. With yes. your 11, because according to our programme, you couldn't have those three up front because those three are the attacking players you need a striker. You're going to have to take out one of Neymar, Ronaldo or Messi. Well, I think Ronaldo now is a centre forward, but apparently he's not according to not this. Allowed. He's not allowed. So I'm going to take him out the team because I don't think he's anywhere near as effective out on the left wing as Neymar would be. And I'm going to put in Luis Suarez. I think he'll have a good World well, Cup. Have Suarez. I'm going to have Suarez. And he did have a good season this year, but I think he, he might. He did have a good season. Good as a good start. I think he might come to the fore in this World Cup. So Shakrad Lewandowski, why would you have... Uh, I, I've seen Lewandowski play for Poland. He's not been anywhere near as effective as he is for Bayern Munich. There are, so there's one reason. Griezmann? Griezmann, uh, I wouldn't put him as an out-and-out centre-forward. I think he's somebody that likes to come short rather than running behind. So I wouldn't have him... If you retain, is there a centre-forward? I wouldn't have him as a centre-forward. Suarez is a centre-forward. The next one would be Cavani. He's a centre-forward as well. I was going to go Harry Kane. Harry Kane, yeah, is another centre-forward. But I would, I would go with Suarez as the main... Can we name every centre-forward? <laughs> yeah. That's what we're talking about. You could, could you say he's a centre-forward. Somebody said Griezmann. I wouldn't have him as a centre-forward. Well, he was in the list as a centre-forward. Ronaldo should be in the list as a centre-forward. He's a centre-forward these days. We've talked a lot about Neymar leading up to this World Cup. They're the favourite to be the player of the tournament. It's interesting, in the past, you haven't been on the Neymar bandwagon. No. You kind of define him as a luxury player. A little and bit of a luxury. Has your mind changed slightly? Uh, a little bit when he plays for Brazil. I think he's been excellent. In the, in the friendlies, he, I've seen him play for Brazil. He's been top quality. He's scored goals. He's run with the ball. He's been a good team player. He's worked harder defensively under the new coach. Uh, but he's still, and we were talking about club football, he's still been a problem at PSG to a certain degree. But there seems to be a different Neymar when he's with club. Absolutely. When he's playing for his country, he looks a better professional. He looks as though he works harder off the ball. He looks like he wants to get on with everybody. When he's playing for his club, he looks like he wants to be the, the, the number one. And if the ball doesn't get to him, he's frustrated. I don't like his antics with diving and, and play acting and, and trying to get players sent off. So, and, if I was a, and what we were talking about last year, if I was a, a manager of one of the top sides, a Barcelona, Real Madrid, a PSG, a, a, a Manchester United, he wouldn't be the player I would bring in to make my side the great side that they wanted to be because I wouldn't trust him. I think you were the only one in the midfield of the boys that had Modric, actually. I think everyone else had Cruz. Well, we, we were at the game together, uh, the, the Champions League final. If there's one player that when people want to press him that can just wriggle out of situations and change the, the pace of the game or play around pressure, switch the play, Luka Modric is that player. I think he's a magnificent footballer, and that's why I've got him in that midfield. Uh, it's interesting you've got Sergio Ramos there, and as you say, we're at the yeah. final together. We didn't quite see exactly what everyone else saw, because obviously you're in the stands, but what do you make of everything that's happened after with regarding the coverage that Ramos has got? Uh, I don't think Ramos meant to 
damaged Salah. I think he's still an exceptional... He'll have his moments where he can get sent off. We know he can be rash, but I still think he's a top-class defender. And he's proved it time and time again with Spain, with Real Madrid. And for a man who loves his defence and loves the organisation, Marcelo at left-back. He'll go forward because Ramos will sit in behind, as we discussed in the Champions League final. At, at length, I seem to remember, <laughs> Robbo. Welcome to Extra Time. Robbo's arrived from mm. England. Kate Winslet on your flight today, Robbo? Any no, celebrities? No, no, but you are a celebrity in Barbados. I went there last week. <laughs> oh, everybody was talking about it. The chap called Karen, he said you were absolutely the best uh, uh, presenter he'd seen on TV. Lovely. We've got a big, big fan base in the Caribbean. Massive fan base. In the Caribbean. Nice. Lovely. Were they nice to you? Did they Very nice, yeah. 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 They, they moaned about uh, Ali Moreno. Well, a couple of Manchester United supporters did, because they said he was anti-Manchester United. Well, they're not wrong, are they? No. Yeah. All, this, all the stuff. Everybody's anti-Manchester The pundits Manchester are very United well liked, I've got to say. Oh, oh there we go. Good. Uh, this person must know you well. Hmm? He's asked Stuart Robertson, which team will use the wing-backs to attack the most at the World Cup? I'd love Robbo to answer. Oh, wing-backs. This um, is your position, Robert. This is my position. You've got to do it with the arms. Well, we saw <laughs> Belgium play with wing-backs today. I don't think they're the strongest players defensively, but they can get forward. Mernier down the right-hand side, Carrasco down the left. They could certainly get a lot of crosses into give the us box. A, give, us a, lo give us a double. Yes. Two of those. That's what they've been doing. Those. Go but they've got to go the other way as well. <laughs> so Belgium. Yeah. Shaka Hislop is there as well. Hey. Question for you, Shaq. What's that? What was your game day meal before you played... First World Cup oh goodness! I ate everything going. I didn't think I was playing. Of course. Coming into the game, Leo Benaka to me was third choice. So I, I had who were the other two then? Kelvin Jack, who'd been playing, who'd, yeah. play, who'd um, played very well in qualifiers, uh, and Clayton Nins. You I'm, were third I'm choice. I'm just, I'm telling you. It's what a Leo, reminder why you were then playing. Kelvin Jack pulled up with an injury. Yep. And I stared Leo Benaka down as if dare him not name him. Were you eating a chicken wing at the time? <laughs> what? Probably had some bacon. And bacon with me. No, seriously, I, I had pancakes, bacon, With the whole everything. shebang. The whole shebang. Go out onto the pitch in Dortmund to warm up. I'm kicking shots at Clayton. At, uh, at Clayton. Everybody else is warming up and doing their thing. And Kelvin is off to the side with, with the goalkeeper and coach. And I'm kicking shots from the top of the box. Wow. That was my pre-World Cup warm-up. Did you play well? Went all right. Yeah, was that the Sweden game? Yeah. That's, that was where Shaka that's was that's amazing. His... Latin writes about him in his book, saying it was unbelievable. Did you, you mention could record? say that about him in every game, really. Well... Uh... <laughs> Not so much, maybe, at Reading. Uh... Newcastle? West that's Newcastle. brilliant, yeah. Shaq. Good breakfast. So then how did it... So then let's take it to the second match. Yeah. How did, was your preparation different then? Yeah, it was. Obviously, you knew it was starting. So. Yeah. Not nervous. Yeah, I, I, I got nervous. Did you get nervous? I can't imagine you nervous about anything. No, no I, I, got, I got very nervous. Now, how did you handle your nerves? Chew gum. Oh, yeah? Oh, that worked. That's, yeah. yeah, that's about as, as good as it could get. And then once, once the whistle goes, I'm fine. Right. Once, once things start, I'm fine. But just that, that whole build-up, I was, I was terrible. What about you, Robbo? I can't imagine you nervous, very much in control. Uh... Apprehensive rather than nervous. You always think, how's the game going to go? Am I playing up against? Is he, is he quicker than me? Is he... Whatever it may be. Until the game starts, you're never quite sure how it's going to go. All sorts of things. I can't ask him that. I've got to ask you about your shower. Huh? What about the shower? I don't know. Is there a story about your shower? Oh, oh no, no, I know what the story is. Yeah, a bit of mildew at the bottom. You can't, get, can't have that. <laughs> Yeah, you have to get the cleaner on that every day. <laughs> I don't, and when I say very the cleaner, precise. I mean I mean the spray, not a cleaner. <laughs> Come on, sort yeah. the mildew out. Oh, that threw me then. I thought it was some sort of pre-ritual. Who, no who would know about my shower anyway? I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> and I'm comfortable with that. Let's move on to Gab, shall we? Good evening, Gab. Good evening. Uh, what time is it there? What time are you now? Like, two in the morning? Uh, it's just about one o'clock in the morning. Oh, are, you, are you finished after We're this? I'm hearing stories it? about Stuart and his cleaner and his shower. And... Oh, obviously yes. not interesting yeah, enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, add that to your show about a certain t uh, your story about the tattoo. The show went entirely in the wrong direction. Oh yes, I was talking about. Right. Anyone? Anyway, 
No disrespect for Perez, but why was Icardi not called as a replacement for Lanzini for Argentina's World Cup squad? Cannot understand what does he have to do to be in the squad, Gab? I'm wondering the same thing myself. I, I'm really out on a limb here. I mean, in terms of what a good Icardi can bring to the squad, I, I, I personally think he's, he's, if he's not better than, he's pretty darn close to what, to what Higuain can bring or really the Aguero that we've seen of late can bring. But that said, it's pretty simple. Lanzini plays a different position, and, and I guess he feels that, that, that Perez is, is a suitable substitute. I mean, what, what Argentina don't need right now is one more center forward, and, uh, and I think it's as simple as that. He needs some level of balance in the team. Last time this came up, when Argentina named their squad, Kirk reminded us that Hardy might be welcome that dressing room. Why? Well, well, I don't know why you'd bring that up, Shaq. I'm just saying that these things come, these things factor. Not because of relations that maybe he oh, may Oh, uh, okay, okay, these, I'm with these, you. These things matter. I'm just saying. Never had that happen in one of my squads or teams. But I'm just saying. Move on from Shaq's gossip column. Uh, which Asian team do you think will go the first, furthest gab in this summer's World Cup? That's a good question. I mean, I don't think this is a great crop of, of, of Asian sides. I think Iran, possibly the best of the lot. But of course, uh, uh, they have they have a very tricky group. Um, I think perhaps Australia and Japan a little more little more manageable. I think it's it's, it's, it's certainly a down period for, for Korea. So maybe I'm going to lean towards. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mention Saudi Arabia. I do not think Saudi Arabia are getting out of their group. So I'm going to go on a limb and say, say Japan or Australia, but I, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be tough for, for, for any Asian team really to get out of these, get out of these groups. Notice Gab making predictions and me not shouting. Good. That's a marked improvement from yesterday. I felt, felt bad yesterday, Gab. Sorry about that. Oh, now they've cut off his mic. That's it. That was not, that was not my choice. <laughs> we shall not know. We shall not know. <laughs> Always shout at you somebody. Have, you're getting a reputation for being a bit of a bully. No, no, I didn't. Shout at Gab to. yesterday. Shout at the sound man today. <laughs> shout at him. Or the sound person. He was shouting at his wife about doing the lawn mowing earlier on. She sent me a message. He told her how to cut You shout at your wife to do the lawn mowing. She was, she was, I don't know how. So she, she sent me a message going, I'm going to cut the lawn. Cut. How do I stop the lawnmower? Which you answered, just take your hand off the handle. <laughs> just right? take your hand off the thing. But I assume she was preempting not being able to stop it. I was worried that it was going to run a mock around the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Uh, which Asian team do you think would go further? Uh, Japan obviously won their group. Uh, but it's, they're not the Japan side that we've seen in previous World Cups, but they were quite good. Uh, I would say. The team that have the chance, the one that Gab went against, Saudi Arabia, are in the weakest. If they can beat Russia right. in the opening game, they have a chance. But on my prediction, not one of the Asian teams will get through the group stage. Oh, neither my predictor. But I'm going to go for Korea. Germany are going to dominate that group. You know I don't rate Sweden. I think they kind of limped into this tournament. And you're not quite sure what Mexico we're going to get after party games. Mm. Oh, again, bringing up your I'm gossip. Just gossip. Saying, bringing up I'm, your just, gossip. I'm just saying, you don't know what Mexico you're going to get. Should we get, say goodnight to Gab now? Yeah, I think we should. Say, say, but say it nicely. No, I will say it nicely. Don't nice. show. I'm not going to shout. Are you going to bed it's now? Late. Apparently, you're going to be somewhere different tomorrow, a bit more scenic, Gab. Oh, no, I can't do it from the comfort of my own home. No, you can't. <laughs> Can we see your home? What happens if the camera turns right? Can they turn the camera right? What's through that window? Oh, apparently we can, we're you, not allowed you, to do it. If you turn it around, yeah, you, you, you'd be looking into, uh, into Raf Honigstein's room. But he's not here yet, so oh, there we wow. it's going to be a real sty tomorrow when he gets there. I can there. imagine Gab's room scruffy. I bet, he, I bet he doesn't tidy up after him, Gab, does he? Well, Gab, yeah, I would have not a bad word said about it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet there's mildew in the shower, though. <laughs> Without that, he won't clean it up, either. Oh, <laughs> right, that's it. I that's do. it. None of this nonsense. Uh, ESPN FC uh, returns tomorrow. Um, of course, you can catch us every day, forever.
You know these stats you get at the end of games that say how far players have run and different things? He never appears at the top. He is a wonderful player, Shakiri. He never appears at the run the furthest. So how are you going to fit in at Liverpool under a coach, Jurgen Klopp, who demands his midfielders chase and run? Well, that's a very good point. Um, if they're going to be battling, battling on all fronts, he's going to be a squad player. And at, what, 10, 12 million in, 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 in these days, day and age? He goes to the squad. I mean, he's a luxury he's, player, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, he, he's got obviously qualities, but but he's a massive luxury player. I, I don't I don't think he'll be anywhere near the first team. If he does sign, he'll go in the rotation. So, I'm going to say, as far as the League Cup team, that's it. Well, that's as far as he sees it. But I I I I just can't see it. I'd put the extra twelve million to a goalkeeper, <laughs> <laughs> and just make sure they don't concede the goals that they've been conceding. Now, this kid's a player, Milinkovic Savic. Yes. Lazio to Real Madrid. It's been talked about. Do you think it could happen? Look, I, I think I think it'd be a fantastic sign of any side. I mean, he is, as you say, Mark, he is an unbelievable talent, this lad. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to see him play for Serbia in the World Cup. Um, but again, to your point, he needs to play football. He needs to be in a regular side. Can he do that at Real Madrid? I, I personally think he's that talented that he can. So... He's going to go to Real Madrid. I'm going to say no. There's a pause there. I'm going to say no because I, I don't think he's not going. I don't think. Not yet. Going, not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Whoever comes in at Chelsea, assuming Conte goes, their task is going to be to win the league. You don't win a league by selling <laughs> some of your best players. Well, and that's where you start your midfield. Where, where you, yeah. If you're going to rebuild your midfield, that is where you start. It would be absolutely madness, and the Chelsea fans would go crazy if they even. Even I mean, they'll be up in arms about this this headline to, to PSG. You know, you can see it. Of course, you can see it. I mean, everybody has a price. Yeah. But Chelsea are absolutely crazy to sell him. Spurs are getting their best players lined up, signed up, yeah. long term. Yeah. Deli Ali next. What do you reckon? Um, I think it'd be very wise business for for Tottenham. I mean, we saw the contract that uh, that Harry Kane's just signed. Uh, and quite rightly so. I mean, he's a you know, fantastic player. And, and Deli Ali is a little bit behind him in development. I think there's, he still has a little bit to learn. But there's no doubt he's a creator. He scores goals. He scores great goals. Mm -hmm. He scores tap-ins. So to, to stay at Spurs, stay at Spurs. Now, I'm led to believe last week... Stay at Spurs, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the age. I'm led to believe <laughs> last week... Uh, Wiltshire was going to West Ham, so he's clearly turned them down because you've been on the phone. Well, the the <laughs> the, the, wor yeah, the worrying thing about this is that Jack Stalling now. So obviously, his contract ends in where I in like three weeks' time, uh, a couple of weeks' time, um, and for Arsenal not to have got him locked in, signed up, sorted out, that that's a big issue. So it seems as though his agents, you know, calling around. Um, I, I I've said, and some people have criticised me for saying it that I think Jack needs a new challenge. Yes, there's a new manager in, I understand that, but I just think that Jack just needs to get away from that uh, environment. He went away to Bournemouth and he, d he did okay. But okay is not good enough, though. Yeah, and I mean, that, he's supposed uh, to be, a, everybody's in England saying he's a world beat. Right, okay, so if you see him and see how he's done at, at Bournemouth and he didn't set the heather exactly. on fire, would you be willing to but, take the chance? But coaches do that, though. I can get something out of this kid. I can get into his head. I can... Could a good coach get something more out of Jack Wilson? Do you know what? I honestly don't know. I, c I couldn't answer that question. And that's why we still don't know where he's going we, to be We playing. still don't know. So, Wilson to Juventus with, with <laughs> Emery Chan. Um, maybe the pace of the game in Italy may suit him. Um, maybe, yeah. I don't know. but um, He's not going to be a first-team player. Though. I'm going to say that to Juve... I'm going to see him miss. I, 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 I don't know, I can't see it. By the way, watch for Unai Emery building his midfielder and Aaron Ramsey next. Well, week. so he should do. Exactly. So what we got today... <laughs> He's a best player. <laughs> two hits and three misses, eventually, for Paul Mann. We got there in the end. <laughs> do you know what? Since we found out we were doing this segment with that badge behind us, he's, you can't keep the smile off his face. I'm surprised he's not standing up. It's the up. greatest badge in the world. It's like last night of the proms and giving us God Save the Queen. Well, I, said, I just said you, yeah, I should be stood up. <laughs> Look, you can talk about England at the World Cup. I can't talk about Scotland at the World Cup. So, hey, 1-0 you. The reason we're going to be talking about England, Tony Adams come out with some interesting comments. The former England captain, he, he's, he's noising everyone up. He says the Spurs players in the squad, 
England aren't going to win the World Cup because they lack a winning well mentality. Well done, Tony. Get stuck what into this. What a great quote that is from a true Arsenal great. He's at the wind-up. Come on. Of course he's having a wind-up. It's, um, no, I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> look, any sane person would say that England, it is a bit of a, a, a stretch of England win the World Cup, but they're going to go there. They're, they're low expectations, but... Look, one of the number one strikers in the world is playing up front for England. You wouldn't say he's a quitter, would you? I mean, he's been banging goals no. in, goals in for fun. Deli Ali, uh, if he's going to play underneath, maybe we, we're still depending on what the system's going to be. Um, he's got some fight in him. He's got some flair in him. He's got goals. He's got creation in him. So, you know, the other players, the, the, the wing backs, where they get in, but Dyer will, will probably be in there mm. in the holding role. So, I think it's a little bit tongue in cheek by Tony. <laughs> One of the comments he did make in the interview, uh, I, I kind of... Why are we smiling when we're talking about Tony Adams? I don't know why. I, I don't know Tony. You, you know. I, I know him really well. He's a leader of men. I'll give him that. He's fantastic. He was an apprentice when I was at Arsenal. Fantastic. Okay. Good. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a great career, so he's entitled to his opinion. We just don't agree with it. One of the other things that he said that I do agree with is the inexperience that England have got mm. might be a bit of a hindrance. They're the third youngest squad. Yep. But playing devil's advocate... They don't have scars from previous World Cups, yeah, so a, is there a bit of both? I think there is a bit of both, yeah. I, I, I think that you know, the further you get in the tournament, the, the, the pressure comes on. Look, we've not even got the first game out of the way. The first game is so important. It's so important that you get three points in that. And it's not an easy game, Tunisia. It's, it's not, it's not They're the best, highest-ranked yeah. African side. It's not an easy game, but if you get that three points under your belt, Mark, you, you're more or less guaranteed of getting in there. Especially with Panama in the group as well. Exactly. So you would expect to beat Panama. Then you've got Belgium as, as, the, as the last game. So um, I, I tend to agree with what you've just said. It, it, look, it can work for you. It can work against you, this inexperience. You just say you go in with no fear or you go in and you go, you know, I've never seen anything like this at this level before. And, and you need some experience to steady the ship a little bit. Just finally, you mentioned right at the start about the expectation is a lot yeah. lower than, yeah. than it used to be. How does the expectation going into this World Cup compare with the expectation you guys had going into the World Cup you played in in 82? Um, well, we, we sort of scraped in to, to qualify. It, it came down to the last game. But you but, still got there. But, but the build-up the build to the games, we were, we were scoring goals for fun. We weren't conceding goals. If you look at the... The, the, the team, it's a very, very strong team. And, and we're undefeated. I mean, we, they, they changed the rules because they went into that, yeah. that second phase at the Bernabeu with Germany and, and Spain. So they changed the, the rules. They, they brought that rule up. But would you rather go into a World Cup with a lesser expectation on a group of Personally? Players? Yes. No. Really? No. No, okay. because, because then you, 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 you put your imprint on the game. You show everybody, yes, you, you, are, you do deserve to be here. And yes, you are going to go as far as possible in this tournament. Three lines on your shirt, huh? There you go, I've got three lines. <laughs> we'll get God Save the Queen.